the audience there in this because the message I want to send out here is, I believe, an important one. Um, I've made a lot of videos about the subject of feminism, and um, the latest one I made was specifically about um, the difficulties of someone who is critical of feminism being in a debate with feminists. Uh, and I did specify in that video that I was referring to the feminists. I was only being honest about my personal experience. Um, but I also said in the video that it wasn't 100% of the time. I also said that I had had civil exchanges with feminists. Now, I'm going to do something different here. Um, obviously, anyone can watch this video that they want. But I want to particularly target this to feminists yourselves. I want to reach out here, and in case you think this is going to be a sort of rant and um, an attack point, that's that's not the idea. I want to reach out in an adult, mature, and civil manner, and I would ask that you you just listen to me for a few minutes, and if you still disagree at the end, that's fine. Um, one thing that we hold dear in democracies is the right to freedom of conscience. So that is something that is absolutely critical. Now, I have the freedom of conscience to upload these videos. Um, there's parts of the world where I wouldn't be able to do that, but that's not to go off on a tangent. Anyway, what I want to do is try and be responsible in doing so. So I do speak out on issues that I feel strongly about, but I also want to be responsible. Now, this is a video directed at um, particularly women, but men as well, who would identify themselves describe himself as feminist and um, who are either have recently come to that conclusion that they see themselves as a feminist or they're broadly sympathetic to what they feel feminism is. Um, the intention of the video is in no way to patronize people. All I am doing is sharing ideas here. It is true that a lot of my videos about feminism are based on um, resentment at the things that I don't like about third wave feminism. But the intention of this video is genuinely to reach out, maybe try and find some common ground. And I would be grateful if people who regard themselves as feminists can leave feedback on this. Anyway, without further ado, let me make my pitch and my angle that I want to take with this. Um, whenever I talk about feminism and feminists, I am always very, very careful not to generalize. The reason for this is because I really don't believe that individual feminists are all fanatical man haters. I don't believe that. I never have. I also believe that there are women particularly involved with feminism, and there might be men as well, um, who are involved or who describe themselves that way because they genuinely have suffered in their own personal lives. Um, it could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe they have been the victim of domestic violence. Maybe they've had bad luck when it comes to relationships. Maybe um, they have suffered discrimination. It could be a variety of reasons. I do believe people's political ideology or, you know what, I'm even reluctant to use the term political ideology for this because I don't actually believe it is a political, certainly not a party political ideology. Um, it is an ideology. So, you know, people aren't, they don't wake up and they say, I'm a feminist. It's a process, just like it's a process that people become conservatives or libertarians or socialists or whatever. Um, so I want to be respectful of the fact that if you've described yourself as a feminist, that is because you have good intentions in your interpretation of what that is. Um, I don't believe the majority of feminists are bad people, and I certainly don't believe the majority are man-haters. But there is a big problem here in image and in delivery. Now, what you need to understand is if, that you, if you tie yourself to a tag, if you are willing to describe yourself in a certain way, then you have to be prepared to face not just to face, but also to understand where criticism of that comes from. Um, I often describe myself as a centrist. Now, if someone was to criticize centrist thinking, I would 
try and be objective enough to understand where they are coming from, I would think, okay, well, it's because they believe that this doesn't have um, conviction, that it lacks the passion of the conviction right or the conviction left. Um, I'll make another video specifically about that, but I'm someone who actually passionately believes in human rights in general. So then you might ask, well, if you believe in human rights and you really do believe in equality, and I do, then why not call yourself a feminist? I have had feminists say to me, um, actually, you agree with us, sweetie, you just don't realise it. Um, the thing is, when it comes to feminism, the point is that it is not that I disagree with every single thing Western feminists say. The issue I have is that, by and large, as a movement, it is intolerant. It's not inclusive at all. Uh, and you hear sort of terminologies, terminologies like um, either people are a feminist or they are, I forget exactly now the term that is used, but um, a backer. Uh, there is a word that some feminists use to describe men who are sympathetic. Um, I, I've lost the word now, but it's a sort of word that indicates that, uh, well, we'll, we'll cautiously let you into our um, group, but we're going to be very cautious about it. There is definitely an element of modern feminism that is exclusive, and this is indisputable. As a movement, I don't think it um, really allows a great deal of internal debate, and that in itself is something that needs to be analysed. Um, I'm not saying there's never any feminist debates take place, there is. But when there is clearly a problem within feminism, um, that is to say that moderate feminists quite often get shouted down by extremists, and this to me, then I, I then wonder, why is it moderate so not a lot more outspoken about the extremists? I mean, this is something I don't get. If you describe yourself as a feminist and you say it's not about man hating, it's just about equality, why then, maybe not you personally, but why is it there is not more of an internal drive within feminism to push out the extremists? If it really is about equality and you want to be inclusive and it is just about reaching um, egalitarian goals, then why not condemn those extreme women within the movement who do give the movement a bad image? Because whenever I have quoted these sort of examples, um, for example, the Scum Manifesto um, and the sort of extreme intolerant feminists who have come out with those sort of things, the usual response I see is that, well, they're just fringe figures, they don't matter. But to me, that's not good enough. If you want people to be sympathetic to your movement, and I do assume that feminists want people to either be sympathetic or accept their their agenda, then you need to be willing to, to criticise yourselves. And it's something that I have seen absolutely scant evidence of within the feminist movement. It's a bit like if political parties suffer heavily uh, in an election, they suffer votes being lost. Usually, um, most political parties have the common sense to analyse their own failures and try and work out what it is, wh where did they go wrong? And this has been seen many times in the United Kingdom. Um, certainly within Labour and the Conservatives, they both had to move towards the centre in terms of credibility now to what extent they have is another matter. But the point is political parties constantly grow and uh, alter themselves and rethink themselves. They do make some big mistakes, but for the most part, they rethink themselves. Now, what I see with um, third wave feminism is a stubborn reluctance to do that. Um, I see sort of amusement and articles like um, usually by feminist writers, like sort of seem to be genuinely amazed that people don't support this movement. But to me, that's, um, you know, if you're a feminist and you, you don't understand why there is such a controversy with the word feminism and why so many people are put off by it, you really need to look at how it comes across. And then maybe you need to consider doing your part to improve its image. So, for example, if movement really is about equality, then let's change some of the language. Let's change the notion 
that there's this big patriarchy overbearing and all women are downtrodden and all men are privileged. Now I'm aware that feminists don't say the words exactly, but that is definitely, definitely the insinuation that is being sent out. That is definitely the insinuation that is being sent out that um, all men are privileged and all women are downtrodden. But I think most level-headed, intelligent women would accept that as not reality, that uh, both men and women can suffer in different ways. Now, any reasonable, intelligent person can see that. Any reasonable, intelligent person can see that there are issues that impact women and issues that impact men, and that um, if you're a fair-minded person, you will agree that both issues need to be tackled. Now, some of the things that MRA movements come out with, they say things like, and I don't actually describe myself as a masculist or an MRA per se, because I'm concerned that it would go too far in the other direction of sort of blaming women and feminism for everything. I don't agree with that. Um, some of the things that MRAs talk about and they blame feminism for, I would be wary about that. But the reason that feminism often does get the blame and the reason I'm wary of that is because quite often it's other men that cause the problems. Um, for example, the issue about men not being able to, for example, male suicide rates, it's ridiculous to blame feminism for that. A big part of that is because uh, there is a stigma about men showing emotions, and quite often it does come from other men. Some of the, the worst treatment of men isn't from women, but it's from other guys. And quite frankly, I'm disheartened sometimes by the callousness uh, men with which men can treat each other um, and you see it definitely in macho sports uh, a lot and as a boxing fan believe me I see that but not to go off on a tangent um, what I'm trying to do with this video is say to feminists out there look I, I don't hate feminists but I do hate the division and the dishonesty that I see coming from the movement and I do hate the hypocrisy and double standards. I try to rise above hating individuals because I don't really believe most feminists are bad people. Um, there are examples of an ugly undercurrent, particularly in North America, where um, men's rights activists have been threatened. And there are many, many examples of women who have been bullied by the feminist movement because they didn't slavishly endorse feminism. There is something I would also like to mention. I, I resent the notion that feminism alone seems to be the moral authority on egalitarianism. Why is it that we assume that it is the only idea that actually supports um, egalitarianism? That's ridiculous. I, I'm guessing it's because of history and we think of the suffragettes and so on, but movements really should be judged in the present day actions. And if you look at the sort of main focus points that Western feminism looks at, it is pretty much issues like attacking a scientist for the t-shirt he's wearing and um, constantly talking about objectification whilst completely ignoring male objectification and so on. Those sort of focuses are very off-putting because actually feminist lobbies would get a lot more support if they really, really stood up for human rights issues affecting women in particular parts of the world where there is a big problem. For example, if a feminist was to say to me there is a huge problem in Pakistan of women suffering honour killings, I would say, yeah, I agree with you, that's a big problem. And uh, anyone who is interested in human rights should be concerned about that. But instead, most feminists focus on other things. And when I've raised this point, the usual response is, oh, oh but we can focus on more than one thing. But it is quite clear where the priorities are. Um, so my question to feminists is why is it that someone has to prove they're egalitarian simply by labelling themselves? I don't doubt um, that there are feminists out there who really do have egalitarian concepts and who do care about men's issues as well. But because feminism itself is such an exclusive movement, then frankly moderates get kind of taken into the net and sometimes I get the impression that there's very little freedom of expression within the feminist movement. So women who are genuinely moderate and genuinely care about women's rights 
but also care about men's rights will find themselves accused of being traitors. I often find the case with male feminists, for example, um, I get the, sometimes there's a slight arrogance from those guys and they want to talk down to other men and call the rest of the chauvinistic pigs. If you are a male feminist, um, this is something I've noticed. Maybe you don't personally do that, but you need to understand that just because other guys don't call themselves a feminist does not mean they are opposed to equality. It's this label issue that I cannot stand. Um, and the point is, it is an issue because whenever the term is attacked, feminists will immediately want to defend it and explain it and um, attack critics. But there, I, I cannot think of many people who would actually argue against actual egalitarianism. I mean, if you really take a poll in the street and say, do you think men and women should be equal? I reckon 90% of people will say yes, probably more. So actually, there isn't that much of a gulf in terms of that core idea of equality. I don't think there is a huge gulf. I think most people think in a relatively similar way that, oh yeah, men and women should be equal. It sounds really nice on the surface. But the problem is when you're part of a movement, a movement that explicitly focuses on lobby groups, that explicitly focuses on pressuring politicians um, to work in a certain way, explicitly focuses on high profile media campaigns, then the movement is going to get an image. And there is very little responsibility from a lot of these organizations to show any level of objectivity. I mean, why is it uh, Laura Bates of the Everyday Sexism Project will not bring herself to, for example, condemn areas where men disproportionately suffer? If she done that, I would respect her and I would say, okay, she really is egalitarian. But as it stands, what it comes across as is only focusing on half the population. You simply cannot say that you're egalitarian if you only care about the problems of half the population. I mean, this is really the fundamental problem with feminism in its current situation, is that it does seem so exclusive. Now, I'm not saying that feminists are in denial about men's issues, although many are, but I'm sure there are feminists who are open-minded enough to accept that those problems do exist. And they will say, well, that's not a problem with feminism. Okay, maybe it's not. But at the very least, you should prove that you're egalitarian by saying, yes, we do need to do much more to address those issues. And you should be a lot more vocal in condemning um, feminists who want to shout down men or women who want to raise these issues because this is a real phenomenon, especially in North America. In Canada and the United States, it is very, I've seen many times, and to some extent in the UK, um, whereby any time that someone does try to address an issue that predominantly impacts men, either the conversation immediately steers towards how it then impacts women, or um, the guy is shut it down. I'm not exaggerating this. It really does happen. Um, so feminists really need to take some responsibility and accept why the movement has the image it has. If you describe yourself as a feminist, um, I'd be very willing to have a conversation with you below this thread. I'm sure we will actually find a lot of common ground on things because I am not someone who believes in uh, hardcore masculinism either. I've always resented sort of tying myself to that because I feel like I could go the other way and only focus on men's issues and then go the other direction of trying to downplay women's issues, which is what I believe feminism does on men's issues. And it becomes a constant battle of the sexes and it just gets really tiresome because actually I really like women and I get on well with women. Most of my friends are women. So for me, I just don't see why a movement should be above criticism. That's an issue that I fundamentally really take issue with. Now, if you're a feminist, would you at least agree that the movement is not above scrutiny? Can you at least agree with that? That movements themselves are constantly evolving, changing, um, or at least they should. I mean, put it this way, if someone was to criticize liberalism or conservatism or libertarianism or socialism, there would be maybe a heated political debate. 
but I don't think anyone would actually say that those ideologies are actually above criticism. I've never heard a conservative say that conservatism is above criticism. And I haven't seen many liberals say that liberalism is above criticism. They might ridicule their opponents and they might say that person's completely wrong. But feminism does seem to be unique in this sense in that it seems to take an arrogant notion. And I, I say it's uh, as a collective body because that's how we have to see it. Um, yeah, that's how it comes across. That it is very intolerant. And the thing is, I have seen moderate feminists give speeches and be involved in debates and be very civil. But I've also seen a very large number acting in a very childish way, trying to yell at opponents and trying to shout down opponents instead of coming up with a mature debate, simply throwing insults. Now, this is something I've seen time and time again. And granted, there'll be critics of feminism who also throw out childish insults. And I've seen those, so I'm aware of it. But in the end of the day, if you really believe in equality, then for goodness sake, let's work together. Let's try and find common ground and let's work together. But I do not believe that one movement has a right to bully and coerce and exclusively claim to be all about equality because the evidence contradicts that. The behaviour of feminist lobby groups is anything but egalitarian. It's very exclusive and it is very um, focused on only seemingly caring about half the population. So why is there not a lot more criticism of the extreme elements of feminism? If you as a feminist consider that you're moderate, um, then, you know, uh, do not agree that the extremists much more needs to be done about them. And let's not pretend they do not exist because we both know that they do. Um, so the final few things I'll say, um, I'm trying to be objective. I recognize that not every feminist, feminist is a crazy man here. And I also recognize that there are many issues in society that impact women. But what I've no time for is making issues out of issues that are gender neutral, that impact both genders, and trying to make that as a women-only issue. I think that's wrong. Um, let me know your thoughts. I really would like to hear from people who see themselves as feminists, and I want to see if you, if you believe what I'm saying is reasonable. If you think I'm completely wrong, okay, but please do explain why. Um, any insults I'll just delete I'm not going to give you a platform um, I'm trying to reach out that's all because frankly I'm fed up with this back and forth um, I'm big handed I don't like feminism as it is that does not mean I am opposed to egalitarianism it really really doesn't I just do not like the double standards um, and in my view dishonesty of the feminist movement not of feminists but of the movement as a whole Final word is if if you are a woman um, who is maybe thinking like of calling yourself a feminist, of course that's your right. But I would say please look at the whole picture. Is that, uh, one final thing I will say: I do believe that when you align yourself with a certain movement, then you can be blinded by the agenda of that movement, and it can take away your individuality. So be very cautious. I'm not telling you what to do, but just be wary of that. It's a bit like joining a political party. You sort of have to go with the flow with whatever the party says. If you call yourself a feminist, then you have to basically have a preset notion. And it isn't just about equality. It's about a lot of other things. So all I would say is be wary of that. If you want to think as an individual, in my opinion, you shouldn't join a movement like this, although it's not my place to tell you what to do. But do let me know your thoughts. Thank you.